Hi, this is Jeff Schultz at the 2010 National Train Show in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We're here at the Rapido booth in Jason Schron's lovely collection of uh, chairs from his various Canadian trains. And Jason's going to tell us about some of the new product coming out from Rapido. Good to be here. We've got lots of new things here. Uh, of course, there's new product announcements, which are our new style of Osgood Bradley car. Uh, this is the Osgood Bradley Deluxe Coach, which is operated uh, throughout the USA, not just in the Northeast, like our first release. So this is Kansas City Southern, Southern Pacific, uh, Seaboard, uh, Cotton Belt. So there's a real sort of interest all across the United States for that. We're very excited about it. We've also got new paint schemes on our existing Osgood Bradley Coach. Uh, there's Bangor and Rustook, their newer scheme. Uh, there's Long Island Railroad. And then there's Penn Central for the three or four guys that model it. So we're, uh, we're pretty excited about that. Uh, but we've also got um, another thing we're doing is everybody knows um, uh, about our existing 646 sleeper, uh, which we announced a while back. We're actually bringing forward uh, four paint schemes that we'd plan to do in a second run, which are prototypical or almost prototypical for this car. So uh, the 646 sleeper is, uh, is a car that um, uh, was uh, built after the war, much more comfortable. The bedrooms are in the middle of the car. And uh, we're doing it in Canadian Nationals, 1954 scheme that everybody wants. It's our biggest seller. Uh, but we're also doing it uh, in the Canadian National scheme uh, with Pullman lettering because they actually leased these cars to Pullman and they were operating in the northeastern and midwest U.S. So we've got a lot of requests for that because uh, you know, people say, a lot of our American customers say, we want more cars that operate down in the States. And these are the green, they're called the green sleepers for CN. They were the ones that operate on the joint services uh, with Central Vermont, Boston and Maine, New Haven, Pennsylvania Railroad, uh, Grand Trunk Western, et cetera. Um, and also Louisville, Nashville. We get requests, I'd say, probably every couple of days. When are you bringing out the pine sleepers in Louisville, Nashville? Well, here they are. We're announcing them. But it's a very tight order deadline because we're going to try and make these in the same production run as our first batch. So all the orders have to be in by October 1st uh, or people are going to miss them. Uh, speaking of missing things, um, the... Canadian Pacific Wide Vision Caboose. Uh, we get requests daily for this, people who didn't get it on time. Uh, so we're not yet announcing another run of this, but we do have the other paint schemes, the second run paint schemes, like the, the white engineering services caboose, um, and then a whole bunch of uh, you know close stand-in paint schemes as well. Um, so if people want to get the, uh, the, their cabooses, they got to order those by August 15th. Uh, and in terms of doing this CP paint scheme again, who knows when it will happen, but we've had to, because of the economy, we've had to change our business model into one where we don't carry inventory. So we'll announce an order deadline. Chances are it won't be ready yet, so we'll say, okay, not yet. We're delaying that. The order deadline hasn't come yet. And then we'll say, okay, now, six months later, it's the real firm order deadline. And at that firm order deadline, if we have orders for 1,000 pieces, we'll make 1,000 pieces. You know, we keep a few extra for warranty, damage, et cetera. Um, but we don't carry a warehouse full of stuff. So it means that people really have to get their orders in on time. Uh, and unfortunately, there's not much we can do if they, if they miss that order deadline. You know, it's, it's, it's tough these days, uh, but we do what we can, right? Uh, but the thing that I... Oh, let me show one more thing before I get into my pride and joy. Uh, is our first arrival of our second run end scale paint schemes. This is an Illinois Central leg rest coach. Um, a leg rest coach painted in the Illinois Central colors. And you can see that what we have standard in our, our cars, we've got uh, window shades inside, we've got uh, silver window frames, all the underbody equipment is there. We have body mounted microtrains couplers, uh, diaphragms with separate etched metal end gates and, uh, and the rods there at the side of the diaphragm. So we're very excited about this, these arriving now. Um, and we should see the first of the N-scale cars arrive in about just over a month. Um, these are the second run paint schemes of a very popular coach in our, our duplex sleeper and the new leg rest car. Uh, but my pride and joy, my pride and joy is our FP9. Uh, we had a sample at last year's National Train Show, the first shot out of the molds um, in China. And as soon as it arrived, we, we realized there was a problem with it. The nose had come out in 3D completely wrong. Uh, so we went back to the drawing board, uh, spent easily, I'd say, 30 hours uh, crawling all over the real thing. I spent many hours actually on the nose with all sorts of measuring tools. I had to go back three times 
because we kept discovering little things that were wrong. We actually, this is the third generation nose. We had to redo it another time because the first re, uh, redone nose still wasn't perfect, mainly around the windshields and around the number boards and headlight. Uh, so now I'm actually very happy with this because I think we've nailed it. Um, after spending all that time in the cold, on the nose, with I did a, used a contour gauge and went around every six inches around the windshield to try and get the exact shape of the gasket and everything like that. Just, you know, all the compound curves around the windshield. We also discovered that the post between the two windshields on the real FP9, and this actually applied to most of the, that, the later F units because I measured a, an F7AU and it's exactly the same thing. The center post is V-shaped. The windows aren't parallel. And, and when we looked at all the other models on the market, the post was parallel, right? It's like the, the, the two sides of the post. So uh, we've nailed that as well. We're, we're really excited. The shell that I have here um, is not the final version in terms of some of the details. I mean, it's missing a, a little of the doodads, like the, uh, the wind shades above the, the side windows. And, the, and it still needs a couple more tweaks, but we're very happy with the nose and, and headlight section. And I hope that you'll be able to get this. Maybe we can do a close-up shot. But in the headlight, not only do we have the, the, the twin beams, but around each bulb is an O-ring and rivets uh, casted in to, to the, the, the back piece there. You know, so I mean, like, my, my attitude is, especially when it comes to the fact that this is the first ever model of a, of a General Motors FP9 out of London, Ontario, which was made for CN, CP, later VIA, and basically I think all the, the ones that were preserved on tourist lines and business trains and things today are the General Motors of London version. Um, no one's ever done that before, and so I'm, I'm determined that you know, no one will ever have to do it again. <laughs> and so we're, we, we, keep, we keep going back and making sure every little thing is perfect. I'm, I'm such a hardcore nut over these things because I need uh, literally about 30 for my layout. A model Spadina Yard in 1980, which is the big passenger yard in Toronto, where there were this, like, dozens of these things on any given day. Um, and so every road number is having specific details for that road number, whether it's grab irons, whether it's the different uh, hatches on the nose, uh, different styles. Some of the hatches were re redone by CN. Some of them came from the factory that way, et cetera. So we're including all of that. Uh, but one of the best things about the, oh, also, I love the doodads on the roof. I mean, I don't know what half of them do, but it, they're there, these little, little doodads. Um, but the best thing, and it looks like I've already knocked one off, is um, underneath, we include everything. So you've got all the piping. You did until I uh, just bumped one off with my finger. There's the, uh, the re-railers hanging with chains. Uh, there's the, uh, the air tanks, all the hoses. You can see everything under there, uh, the electrical lines, etc. cetera. And, uh, and I mean, I don't think anyone's ever tried that before on FU model. But I, I have this underframe, underbody obsession. I think those of you who have our products know that. You know, I mean, I spend a lot of time underneath real passenger cars. Uh, if you look underneath our caboose, you know, it's the same thing. Underneath the caboose is every, uh, every piper hose that went there. You know, it's a bit of a mess, right? And then, of course, underneath our, this is uh, our, the 646 sleeper. Uh, we've got all the different, every air hose, every pipe. I'll tell you, I was on the phone when I was designing the underframes for our new uh, grill parlor car. And uh, the grill parlor car, you can't go, there's none, no unmodified versions in existence. So uh, I was using a lot of blueprints to make sure all my electrical lines and all my, my pipes were in the wrong, right place. And at one point, I, I couldn't tell whether the uh, electrical line should go above or below a steam line. Um, in one particular spot. So I get Richard Longpre on the phone. Richard Longpre is a buddy of mine who's owned over 80 different passenger cars, and he knows, he, he's crawled, he's repaired, he, you know, he knows his way around. And so I said to him, you know, Richard, I got a real dilemma here. There's this, this electrical line. I don't know whether it goes above or below the steam line. He's on the other end of the phone, and we're both looking at the drawings. I emailed to him, and he says to me in his wonderful Montreal accent, right? He says, you know, Jason, there are two people in the whole world who know where the pipes go underneath the club car and the buffet parlor. They are you and me. I think if we don't know where those two pipes go, I think you can make it up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks. All right. This is Jeff Schultz with Jason Schron of Rapido Trains. And I'm from Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine at the National Train Show 2010 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Thank you.